Members of the Presidential Guard are known as FSONES. Hi, I'm Kylie. Welcome to Just Another Army Vet, which is a channel dedicated to military and defense. It is almost impossible to find any videos on the Greek military in English, so I'm really excited about this one. Today's video looks like a good one. This is the Yorkshire man who became a Greek presidential guard by Forces News. For those of you who may not know, the Greek presidential guard or Evazones are a group of elite Greek soldiers who are trained to perform certain ceremonial duties. These guys stand guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Athens and also at the Presidential Palace. And these are equivalent to the United States Tomb of the Unknown Soldier Guards. Let's get to it. Such precision. The guardsman on the left is Evson Rainy Evangelos, or Evan. He grew up in Yorkshire. But he's half Greek, so like all young men his age, he was expected to conscript. Having completed an exhausting nine months in the Presidential Guard in Athens, he's now back in York. Oh, that's not bad. In Greece, it's a huge honour. And uh, very few people get to do it because of the requirements to join, the height limit, body capability. And he's so tall. Stuff. And uh, because I knew that I would fit that category and I knew that I could experience something so unique, something that you would carry with you for the rest of your life and be extremely proud of and I couldn't possibly turn that opportunity down. All those who serve in the Presidential Guard are conscripts and come from all walks of life. There's lawyers, lorry drivers and basketball players. To be accepted, you must be at least six foot two, have no medical complaints, no Whoa. visible tattoos, be Greek, Christian, Orthodox, and to date, you must also be Caucasian and male. male. Members of the Presidential Guard are known as Evsones. Everything from the back of your leg, your hamstrings, your calves, as you squeeze and go all the way back as far as you can. Every part of the service is symbolic, from the direction of the steps to the shapes that you make with your feet and your hands. Uh, to even just the most important part of the whole service, which is standing perfectly still, that's also symbolic. So, um, we're guarding the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. We're honoring those who died, who gave their lives so that we could be free. The dead don't move, they don't talk, they don't do anything. So when we are on service, we stand perfectly still, uh, at perfect attention the whole time. Uh, the only thing we're allowed to move is our eyes, and everything else has to be a complete still. As such, we're symbolizing the dead. I want to know the story behind his mustache. I hope she asks about it. That takes some balance, too. During the, uh, the Evazonic step, your foot is pointing forward and it salutes, which is to say it flicks up and then points forward and then hits the ground with strength again. And during that, there's a number of different things. First of all, it's meant to look like the leg of a horse, and that was because all of the uh, Evazon is low light infantry in the past, they were also always led by officers on horseback and they were also cavalry units and, and so on and so forth. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is symbolic of stepping over dead bodies because again, you know, in battle, stepping over dead bodies and such. And then at the front of the, le the step, when the leg comes up and makes this motion, that's because the pom-poms in the clogs used to hide knives. And it's a, to sim symbolize a sort of slashing or kicking motion, which the Evzoners, which were originally guerrilla fighters, would do in close combat. This is, when viewed from this angle, a number four, which four. is representing 400 years of Turkish rule and Turkish occupation. Although one should Ooh. worry more about technique at all times, of course, as always, who has the highest feet, who can, um, during reverse steps, who can lift their heads up the highest, who can, when they're marching, get their foot up to their head or over their head or whatever else. So yeah, that's, so there is a competitive element to that too. And what about the moustache? The moustache. As recently as 10 years ago, nobody in the presidential guard had moustaches. And I think they start to come into fashion with the whole, I suppose, hipster fashion trends. But specifically in the presidential guard, it took on another dimension. First of all, you can't have a moustache unless you've had at least 100 hours of service, which would be standing still and, and so on. And so uh, it's a kind of like a, you know, a badge of honor of sorts. You've done enough, you know, you've had, you've had felt enough pain. But further to that, people really want it more because uh, all the old generals during the Greek War of Independence and the Balkan Wars, they all had big mustaches, be it Kolokotronis, Karaiskakis, Pavlos Melas, they all had uh, big mustaches. And so you, you're, and all the Greek soldiers during that time had mustaches. And so it's also 
you know, harking back to them in those days and making a reference to that as well. So I wonder how long his guard post is. For the United States, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier Guard, I believe each posting is 30 minutes and then they get relieved by someone else. So I wonder if they have a similar time period as well. If you know how long their posting is, then please drop that in the comments. In the first so many hours, you'll be thinking about what to do during your half-time steps. You want to make your service perfect, and you're thinking, what can we improve, what can we do different this time? As the hours go by and it all becomes autopilot and you know what you're doing, your mind wanders a bit more. And, and then as you rack up more and more and more hours, then your feet start to hurt more and more each time and then you're just thinking well boy when can I start my half time steps where can I change so people tend to underestimate just how uncomfortable military dress uniforms are especially the shoes can't imagine standing on a post for however long and then doing all those marching movements every single day with those shoes on yeah that's painful um, and your mind gets brought back to just the, the pain, you know, as much as you want your mind to wander. But of course, all that is, is mixed with moments of just pride. Um, being able, I remember very clearly exactly. the feeling in my first ever service of standing up there and looking straight ahead and looking down at Mu Street and, uh, and just thinking, I'm that guy now, that guy that I've admired for many years and now I'm up there. And, that feeling wasn't just for the first service and the last service. There were many, many, many moments in between on very certain days or certain moments when you would just sit there and all you would think about is, I'm really proud right now. This is a really wonderful thing that I'm doing right now, as much as it may hurt. Having completed a handsome 246 hours of guards duty during his conscription, Evan is now working out what to do next. At least one option is joining the British Army. I love his shirt, by the way, Led Zeppelin. So that was a short video, but I learned a lot. I had no idea just how symbolic every movement was, especially how the leg shaped as a four symbolizes 400 years of Turkish rule. I never would have guessed that unless he pointed it out. Tomb guards, whether it be in Athens, at Arlington National Cemetery, or anywhere else in the world have the utmost dedication to their job to be able to do this. These guys have literally one of the most honorable jobs that you can have as a soldier. So my hats off and salute to them. One of these days I will go ahead and react to a video on the United States Tomb Guard. And once I do that, I'll put that video right here. Until next time, if you enjoyed today's video, then please smash that like button. Make sure to check out this video on the Greek Army Hell March. Thanks for watching.